All right, everyone, we start off today talking about the DHS leak scandal, really a super scandal. This really should be more of an October surprise than anything. People are too busy uh, pondering over what Paul Pelosi's attacker had for a political motive, even though he may have just been goddamn coked out of his mind or something. Uh, or disgruntled. I think stalking is probably involved. Link in the description. This is from The Intercept, so it's uh, not archived. Uh, the uh, DHS scandal pertinent to numerous lawsuits uh, that have gone forth. We've got new revelations from that, and uh, it's not looking good. Uh, we're finding out some of this we already knew. Uh, you can go through the article yourself. Uh, you have to go about halfway down before you get to some of the, the nitty-gritty, some of the juicy details. Now, first we find out that there's a special portal um, for law enforcement and government agencies, of course. You know, if you've got a .gov email or something, you can use this portal through Facebook and certain other sites in order to flag content, and it gets automatically like expedited to the moderation teams. Um, that would not be a problem for me if it were for illegal material. So somebody on Facebook is posting illicit porn, they're trying to sell crack or something, they're selling a stolen car. That actually makes sense to me, uh, because it has, especially on Facebook, that has been a, a systemic issue. I'm sure it's a problem on Instagram and similar sites too. That makes sense. Um, normally, you'd, you'd think there should be some process to up the ante uh, when you're contacted by, you know, <laughs> federal law enforcement. Uh, probably people's lawyers. Uh, there should be a registry of lawyers uh, in the nation uh, for counterclaims on copyright and things like that, too. That would help protect content creators. I have a problem with that special portal. The problem is what it primarily has been used for, initially incepted, was illegal content. But since the government started its crusade against disinformation, there's been mission creep. And this happens all the time within governments. And the article points out that like the Bush administration, this was long ago, was trying to influence voters ahead of 2004 by tinkering with the, uh, the uh, terrorist warning system. This sort of stuff still happens. We see it all the time. It's much more transparent now. It's also people have gotten so used to it that they don't have as much outcry for it. The problem is that the original, hey, Al-Qaeda is trying to recruit people on this Facebook page, so we're flagging it sort of thing, has gone by the wayside in favor of uh, attacking disinformation. The problem is what we've seen from the federal government. We certainly saw this with the Hunter Biden case, specifically on Facebook, when the feds approached uh, Zuckerberg himself and said, look, you know, there's, there's going to be a wave of disinfo coming, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, has nothing to do with the last 24 hours of reporting by people like Roger Stone and Ben Steve Bannon. That's not what we're referring to. We're not, we're not saying it by name, but we're insinuating to you uh, that that is Russian disinfo. Despite the fact that internally they knew that it was not disinformation, the real disinfo was claiming that the Hunter Biden laptop thing was false. They had not investigated enough to determine that it was actually fake. In, in the end, of course, it turns out to be real. Um, the election would have probably gone in the other direction had that story actually been allowed to break and the legacy media report on it say we have questions. Not even, hey, we're making declarative terms about it being real, but just, hey, you know, we, we can't disprove it. We're still looking through it with a forensic team and we don't know what the fuck is going on and there might be a big oopsie with quid pro Joe here. We've seen that before. Since the government is engaged in such behavior, the fact that they're flagging posts based solely on the claim that it's disinformation sourced to some extremist group, the Russians, the Chinese, or something is concerning. Now, the good news is that only about a third of those claims apparently made over that period of time on that specific special portal actually were found to be actionable. Th this is very, very interesting to me. You're telling me that Zuckerberg and, at the time, fucking Agrawal at Twitter and people like that had more restraint in moderating the content? They respected free expression more than the federal agencies that the fucking taxpayers are paying for in the first place? That should set off alarm bells, by the way, in everybody's mind. But it gets better. It turns out that the DHS and other groups, uh, CISA especially, were having monthly meetings uh, with big tech uh, firms, uh, including some like Verizon, Microsoft, Apple, Google, certainly, Twitter, Facebook, now Meta, uh, etc., uh, to try to help police content more. Here's what I would say. If the government is removing things that they're not illegal, uh, saying things that aren't true for political purposes is not violating any U.S. law, and you are banning or throttling, demoting uh, content by U.S. citizens, 
and and your company well number one it's publicly traded platforms public officials takes public taxpayer subsidies especially in california that in and of itself uh has been problematic i i've pointed to that as really the biggest argument against big tech censorship of of legal content at least among u.s citizens it's because they're effectively they're not private companies there are three or four different methodologies by which you could feasibly legally argue that's not really a private company at all it's a public platform 230 comes in they're looking at that at the scotus level now uh, of all things there's a reason for that it's because it's important this goes a step further this is the government directly and explicitly attempting to motivate those so-called private companies to take down material that may be domestically sourced and break no law and this would be like if a government let's say let's say um, history is is different um, Jeb Bush is now president and he takes a moralistic leaf out of the notebook of his his predecessor George W and his daddy Herbert Walker John Ashcroft is back in government covering up the naked statues in DC and the Jeb Bush administration Yeb says goes uses this methodology to talk to big tech firms and says you know what you've got a big problem with nudity on your sites and then DHS goes and CISA goes every month and speaks with them and says, you need to do more about removing titties off of your platforms. A lot of the people, and this is very ironic because porn serves no purpose as far as political discourse goes, at least generally speaking. A lot of people that don't have a problem with censoring disinfo all of a sudden would have a problem with the government doing that. It'd be like being back in the 2000s. Again, you'll remember Ashcroft covering up the naked statues in D.C. because apparently he doesn't understand artistic mediums. If that kind of moralism were the goal here, if it were, if it were McCarthy, like a Red Scare thing, and not just more Russia, but like the commies are going to get us quick, you know, get, remove the socialistic disinfo, half the people who support this endeavor wouldn't support it. Which I find astonishing. You'd be actually going after something deliberately harmful. In the case of porn, you'd be going after something that's in a free speech gray area half the time. And at the very least, there, there would be a, a, a legal preponderance in support of doing so. Not one that I would support, but which many people would, at least for moralistic intent. Meanwhile, legitimate speech, political speech, made by U.S. citizens is being censored and the U.S. government that they're paying their taxes to, these people that are being censored in some cases, if they pay taxes, some Americans do, some Americans don't, is being censored because the government, the elected U.S. government that under the First Amendment is not supposed to be engaging in such behavior, is perturbing and antagonizing these big tech firms into doing so sometimes up to and including misleading those tech firms again like with the case with hunter biden's laptop and the fbi meeting with zuckerberg and swearing up and down they had reason to believe it was russian disinfo while their own internal internal circulation as far as their conversations was hey we need to not meddle in the midterm so we can't uh, okay this story we have to tamp down on it we know that it's not disinfo we're just worried about it affecting the election but that's not what they told Zuckerberg, now is it? No, they told him that the Russians had concocted the story through evil Roger Stone, uh, the Trump people. Um, can we really trust them, therefore, because we know that this is going on with the power to police speech, at least indirectly, using big tech as a cudgel? No, of course not. It's not even constitutional at this point. It's, no, it's not even close to legal like a, you know, a, a publicly traded company that has... Now, politicians that it platforms and NOAA alerts and, D and all sorts of stuff like that, law enforcement uses it, that's already quasi-unconstitutional right there. That's without the government actually doing anything. This is DHS itself getting involved in political discourse, trying to tilt the scales, using the, th using the concept of disinformation that by and large doesn't even exist. That's the long and short of it. Most of their claims of disinfo are themselves, ironically, misinformation. That's about all. Peace out.